One of the great advantages of working with DxO Photolab is that you never have to import anything. You simply browse any folder on your hard drive or an attached hard drive or even on your network to explore and edit your photos. This means that not only can you organize your photos however you like, wherever you like, but that if you have some random photo in some random location that you want to edit in Photolab, for example, sitting on your desktop or in your downloads folder, all you have to do is navigate to it. There's no need to import it. All editing in Photolab is non-destructive, so the edits that you do make are stored in something called a sidecar file, a tiny little text file that contains the instructions of what changes you've made to the image. This also means you can make duplicate versions of a photo, called virtual copies, taking essentially no additional space, as each new version is simply a new set of instructions saved in that same tiny sidecar file. Photolab also gives you all the tools you need to organize your photos, mark as favorites, add star ratings or color categories, and all kinds of metadata. And now, to even batch rename and stack your images for even more organizational power. Check this out. First, let's look at navigation in the photo library. The first thing you'll see is the recent searches. So if I go into the search tab and I search for anything, let's say I want to find all the photos shot on my Lumix S1 Mark II, I can simply start typing in the search term. It shows me the results here, and it even shows me the number before I select it. Then it will quickly find all the images that have been indexed that match that criteria. So how does an image get indexed? Well, whenever you select any folder anywhere in your hard drive, it automatically indexes it. However, you can also right-click on a folder inside of the navigation panel and force it to index without actually having to load it. This is a great way to quickly index a bunch of photos on your hard drive. Your previous searches show up here under Recent Searches. Then you have your favorites. This is something you can manually control by simply clicking on the plus tool here to add any folder anywhere on your system as a favorite. As you can see here, I've already added a couple. I have one from a recent holiday in Croatia, some portraits, and so on. Then underneath that, you have your folders. This is just navigating your hard drive. You have two categories here, devices and shared. Under devices, we see my internal hard drive and my external drive, which if I open that, you can see has a couple folders full of pictures in them. And then you have shared, which shows any network mounted volumes. Underneath that, you have projects. If you want to build a virtual organization structure, potentially collecting images from multiple locations across your system into one virtual folder, you can do that using projects like this. Under projects, you can create one of two things, either a project or project group. I already have a project group here called travel. And then inside of that, a project called Seaside. That Seaside one has just a few photos in it. Let's go back to this folder up here under favorites, and I'll select a few photos in here from this trip, and we'll just call them city. So I'll just select a few of them at random here, click the plus button, create a new project, and I'll type in city. Now I can choose to put this inside of an already existing group, in this case, travel. And I can also choose whether I want to include the selected images or not. With both of those enabled, when I click create, it creates a new project called city that has those nine images. Underneath that, I'll see Seaside with those seven images. But now if I click on Travel above that, it'll show everything in both projects. You also have a variety of ways to label your photos, including as a pick or reject, with star ratings, and with color labels. As I roll my mouse over each one of these thumbnails, you'll see a little ghosted shadow of two dots to the right of the thumbnail. The top dot is a green dot, and if I select it, I've just marked that as a pick. The one on the bottom is a red dot. If I select that, it marks it as a reject, and you can see that it dims out the image so it's easy to identify. I can mark that as a pick, that as a reject, and so on. Of course, this can also be done with keyboard shortcuts, and if you don't know what the shortcut is, you can go to the Help menu, go to Keyboard Shortcuts, and here you have a list of all the keyboard shortcuts in the system. The ones we're looking for here are Pick and Reject. You can see that Pick is both the number 7 and the P key for Pick, and the Reject is the number 9 or the X key. But if you look underneath this, you'll see that there's a further keyboard shortcut. Pick and go to the next image. Shift 7 or Control Shift 7 or Shift P. I'm going to use P and Shift P to mark a picked and then automatically move to the next image. Let's say I want to mark that as a pick. I would hit P, but the image is still selected. So now I'll go to the next image and this time I'll hit Shift P. You see it selects it and automatically moves forward. Let's say I don't like this one, so I want to unpick it by hitting X. I could just tap X or tap Shift X. It'll reject it and move to the next image. 
Of course, if I bring up the larger preview, it'll be easier to see what's going on here and it'll allow me to quickly go through and mark the picks or the rejects. So I can go here and say pick, pick, reject, pick, reject, and so on. We can also add star ratings. You'll see the ghosted empty star ratings under each thumbnail. And if I hover my mouse over them, I can select whatever star rating I want. I can give that one a three, give that one a five, and so on. But of course, there's a faster way to do that as well. And that's with the numbers on your keypad. I'll go up here and type one to give that a one star, go to the next one, tap three, and so on. Finally, you can add color labels by right clicking on the name of any image and choosing from the color dropdown. And again, you can see the keyboard shortcuts assigned to those colors. On the right side of the screen, you have your metadata panels. This shows all the relevant data about your photo. I can see the ISO, the shutter speed, the focal length of the lens, and so on. If I want to get to my advanced metadata settings, there's a button here that says advanced settings. Click on that, and it shows you a bunch more information. Down underneath that, you'll see a series of IPTC fields. There's status, image, content, and contact. These are all custom fields that you can add in yourself to help identify your images. And finally, at the very bottom, you have keywords. There's a keyword list in here of all previously used keywords, which you can then easily add to any image. The advantage, of course, of adding all this metadata is to make it easier to find the photos that you want. Up here under the filter menu, you can see that you can filter by a variety of criteria, including things like picked or unpicked, raw or RGB images, unprocessed or awaiting processing images, star ratings, colors, and so on. Lots of different things you can filter by. And these filters all combine. So if we go back to the image here, let's go ahead and add a red label to a couple of these. And I'll give this one a one star rating. So here I have two images that are labeled red, one with three stars and one with one star. If I go up here and I choose to show just the red images, it'll show just those two. But I can combine that and say, show me just the red images that are three stars. And now it's combined the two criteria to show me that. Now, if I turn off the red label, it'll show me everything that has three stars, regardless of the color. You can also sort your images from this menu here, including by file name, file format, file size, and so on. And whichever one of these you select, you can reverse the order by clicking on this little triangle here. A new feature in Photolab 9 is stacking. Stacking simply puts any number of images in, well, a stack that you can open or close. There's no rule on what stacking is for, but it's commonly used to stack a sequence of similar images, such as catching a football or leaning in for the wedding kiss. You can stack similar images, put the best one on top, then close the stack. Let's have a look at how this works. I have a folder of photos from a football game that's got a whole bunch of photos in here. And let's say that I wanna stack some similar shots. So let's find a sequence that looks like it belongs together. Here we have these three here, of this kid going after the ball. I'll go ahead and select all three of those and then choose Stacking and Create Stack. Now I have this group of similar images that are stacked together. If I wanna pick one that looks like the best image and move that to the top of the stack, I can right click on it, go to Stacking, and choose Move to the Top of Stack. And now that image becomes the hero image when I collapse the stack, that's the one that I see. There's a lot of other options in here if we select multiple images and go back into Stacking, including adding images into an existing stack, breaking the stack, expanding the stacks, and so on. And here's a neat option down here called Stack by Shot Date. Let me get out of here and select all of these images, and then right-click again, go back into Stacking, and choose Stack by Shot Date. And now I have a slider that allows me to create stacks based on the time between photos. You can see the time up here, 17 minutes. Well, none of these images were shot 17 minutes apart, so right now with that selection, all these photos would go into one stack. But let's bring this down to a more reasonable time for a sporting event. Let's get this down to a couple of seconds. Let's say 20 seconds or so. Anything shot within 20 seconds of each other will go into a stack. That's 25 stacks of images and just one that's left out of that stack that didn't fall into that range of 20 seconds of any other shot. I'll make this a little bit lower. Let's take it down to just a few seconds. And now I have 42 stacks with 23 left behind. I'll go ahead and stack those. And very quickly, we get a series of stacks in here. Now, as I open one of these, this one has six images. We can see that these are all of a rapid sequence shot very close together. But stacks aren't just for sports. If we go back to these travel photos, I could select any number of similar images and put them into a stack. Let's say I take these two that are clearly very similar, select those and create a stack. Select these two and this one over here that seems out of sequence and put those in a stack together. 
Stacking really gives you a great way to organize your photos. You also have the ability now to batch rename images using the powerful new batch rename tool. Since I've just put a few images into stacks, let's go ahead and use those to do some renaming. I'm going to go back to the football game and select a sequence here. Let's use this one of six photos here. With those six selected, I'll right click and choose rename selected images. There's lots of tools in here to rename. On the simple side, we have a find and replace. You can see the original image name, just IMG and then a number. So I could replace IMG with something like the game. And now you can see the new name will be the game with the number after it. But I can do a lot more than this. Let's go to the advanced rename. And from here, you have a variety of presets to choose from, but I'll just create my own. To create a naming composition, you have a series of tags down here that you drag into the composition to build whatever you want. And those tags can be changed with this drop down here. So let's add the date to our image. I'll start this over and we'll add the year, the month, the day. And then I'll put a little dash in there and we'll follow that with the hour, the minute, and the second that the photo was made. Before all of this though, I want a custom name. So let's go back to the beginning and we'll type in the big game. What else can we add other than the date and time? Let's go to the EXIF data and maybe at the end here, I want to put what camera it was shot with. So I'll put my camera model on there and now it's added that to the name. So here you can see the big game, the date, the time, and the camera it was shot with. Just for good measure, let's add a sequence number to the very end of this. Go to counter, we'll choose a three digit sequence, and that's it. Now if I rename those six images, you can see how the files have been renamed right there in the preview. And if I right click on these and choose reveal image in finder, we'll see that those have actually been renamed in the finder. As you can see, Photolab gives you tons of options to sort and organize your images, all while leaving them where you want them to live, anywhere on your hard drive. Thank you.